Hi, I'm Catherine Grayson Nans, the developer advocate for Kendo React. Today, we're taking a look at the Kendo React data grid. You probably already know that our grid allows you to enable sorting, filtering, or grouping, but did you know that you can combine these features, even enabling all three at once? For handling really complex data, this can be a powerful asset. But we're also going to talk about balancing that with what your users actually need and how you can determine which features to enable in order to create the best user experience for your application. Let's start by taking a look at the technical implementation of combining these features, since it's a little bit different than what you do if you were just using one at a time. You can see over here in our example on the right side, I'm only using the grouping. There's no sorting, no filtering, just one feature. However, over here on the left, I've enabled all three at once. We're gonna take a look at these two files and compare and contrast them to see what the difference is. Let's start at the top of the file and work our way down. The first thing you'll notice is that there's a difference in line four. When I'm only grouping, I can import group by, which handles just the grouping. However, when I want to handle multiple processes at once, I need to use process instead. Then let's move it down a little bit. You can see here, we do start off in both cases by setting our initial state. In this one, it's called initial group since it's just handling the group. In this one, it's called data state, but they do the same thing. I've left these empty, but if you wanted your grid to start with a particular configuration, this is where you'd define it. Next, let's take a look at how we're handling state. It's a little bit simpler when we only have to handle one thing at a time. As you can see here, in this one where we're only grouping, our state setup is a little bit simpler. We only have group and set group, and then that's updated on group change anytime the user changes the grouping configuration. However, when we're handling more than one thing at once, we need to break up our state. So here we have data state and result state. Data state is what handles the current configuration of the grid. So that's the current state of the filters, the current state of the sorting, the current state of the grouping. That's not actually the content that's being returned. That's just the configurations of the filters. However, we do handle that content with result state. So as you can see, that handles this processing that we imported above. So when we're updating the contents of the grid, we're talking about result state. When we're handling the updating of the user configurations to the grid, that's data state. That's reflected here, where the data that we pass into the grid is result state data. And here on data state change, it calls this processing on our result state to make sure that our results are always updated with the newest configuration of data that our user has set for the grid. The last thing we need to take a look at is our component itself. When we're just grouping, you can see over here, we've got our data set to group by and we're passing in our current data, Astro data, and our group configuration. A groupable is set to true, and on group change, we use set group to update that group configuration. However, when we're handling more than just grouping, that looks a little bit different. Over here, you can see our data is set to that result state.data. And we've got our filterable, sortable, and groupable props all set to true. However, instead of using on group change, over here we need to use on data state change. And as we touched on before, that handles us updating our data state here, as well as updating our result state by using process instead of group by, passing in our data and our current data state. This ensures that every time the user looks at the grid, it's got the most current configuration. So a couple of changes, nothing too crazy. As you can see, it hasn't really changed the overall like size of our component much. It's a little bit bigger. My grouping only component is 33 lines. My all three component is 42 lines. So less than 10 lines of difference altogether. But when we hop over to our application, we see now we have the ability to group, we can sort, and we can filter, which is a wonderful, powerful set of configurations for us to hand to our users. 
While it can be tempting to see a list of features like this and say, just turn everything on, this all-in-one approach isn't always the best experience for your application. I'd actually encourage you to enable only those features which you think will be the most beneficial for your users and leave out the ones you think would be less used. Enabling every feature and every configuration of every feature can be an overwhelming experience for your users and could create a complex UI. As you can see over here, I have pretended to be a hapless user who has enabled all kinds of grouping, all kinds of sorting, all kinds of filtering, and I've created a grid that's not actually very helpful. If you know that your user base is made up of power users who are going to feel comfortable manipulating complex data grids like this, then absolutely give them that full freedom. But if you happen to know that the majority of your users aren't at that level, you can improve their experience by being thoughtful about how you configure your grid component. Sorting is ideal for situations when your users will need to compare your data or see all of it in a specifically organized way. For example, being able to compare prices on different offerings by sorting their cost from low to high, or looking through all of their employees alphabetically organized by name. This is a great way to organize data that's already in a similar category. Filtering, on the other hand, is ideal for when your users only need to see a certain subset of your data and not all of it at once. For example, only showing products within a certain category, or only showing employees with a specific title. This is useful when you have several different subsets of data included in your grid, but your users don't need to see all of it at once. This can be especially powerful when it's combined with sorting, which allows your users to filter down to a specific subset of that data and then organize it in a progressive way. Grouping, on the other hand, should be used when your users need to see the entirety of the data but broken down into smaller categories. It's kind of a blend between filtering and sorting from a UX perspective. It allows your users to create the same kinds of subsets as they would if they were filtering, but without removing the data from the view in the same way that filtering does. This allows your users to still see all of those other categories for comparison purposes, but in a more visually differentiated way than just a sorted list. This is especially good if you've got a lot of data but it all needs to remain in the view. Breaking it into smaller categories makes it easier for your users to parse through it, but still ensures that the entirety of the data is available to them in one view. I recommend taking a little time to think or talk to your users about what they'll be doing with the data in your grid. What are their goals? What conclusions are they trying to draw? What problems are they trying to solve? What kinds of connections are they attempting to make? The answers to these questions can help guide you towards whether sorting, filtering, grouping, or some combination thereof will be the best fit for your software. We provide everything in one component for your convenience as a developer, so you can use the same Kendo React data grid in multiple different contexts and scenarios within your application. But this doesn't necessarily mean that your users will also benefit from an all-in-one solution in the UI when you combine your knowledge and expertise about your own user base with the power of the Kendo React data grid, the possibilities are truly endless. Happy coding.